This video is proudly sponsored by New Type. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewTypesHQ.com and use promo code UTAKABUTTER for 10% off on your next purchase. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes, and welcome back to another exciting build from the good folks from Polar Lights. So why don't we get started with the 1-1000 scale, USS Enterprise, from the television series Star Trek Discovery. And without further ado, let's get to it. Hello and welcome back my dudes and dudettes to another unique build from the good folks from Polar Lights. Now when it comes to Star Trek, I am no stranger to this franchise. In fact, I like Star Trek a little bit more than Star Wars mainly because of the ship designs. They're very elegant, they have a nice unique organic look to them, and overall they're very simple and easy to build. And then a couple of years ago I ended up tackling the build as the USS Franklin from Star Trek Beyond. I absolutely love this design, it definitely pays homage to the USS Enterprise NX-01 from Star Trek Enterprise. Now when I got this kit, I wanted to pull the bells and whistles, give it a light weathering, give it a nice custom paint job, and put LED lights. But the only LED lights I can find on Amazon require close to 8 AA batteries, and that was not going to work. So a couple years passed, I found Evan's designs, and I said to myself, you know what, why not tackle and build another Federation Starship one more time? And thus, my dudes and dudettes, we have the USS Enterprise from Star Trek Discovery, and I can't tell you how excited I was when this model kit became available for the general public, because I have always wanted to tackle a proper USS Enterprise model kit. Now, I know there's the reason fit i know there's uss enterprise d but those require like custom aztec decals i wanted to try something that just get me back into building starships and this kit definitely fulfills it with a nice front shot of it in dry dock alongside uss discovery and a glimpse of what you can expect for water slide decals which is not a lot but overall impressions this kit looks beautiful so what can we expect inside the box as always, you're happily greeted with the instruction manual, which I have to give a lot of credit to this. This is what we grew up with as builders back in the early 90s. There was no colorful instruction manuals. It was very straightforward. You got your hero shot of the Enterprise in the front page, and then you unravel it, and then you have to piece everything together like a giant Lego set, which I absolutely love that they retain that aesthetic. And as you can clearly see here, this model kit definitely has a lot of work to it, but the nice thing about it is I don't believe it needs any glue, but it doesn't hurt to play it safe to add glue to it. And then once you got the whole thing constructed, that you get a nice little action base to put it in. So I think that's really nice that they include it. And as for the water slide decals, once again, they're not crazy. They are just simple enough where you can actually put the registration number on top, on the bottom, on the side of the warp nacelles, as well as underneath the Enterprise saucer section. But probably by far my favorite part of this model kit, it gives you a clear indication of putting LED lights in there. Now, you do have the option of putting custom LED lights like what I'm going to do, or you can go the safe route and buy their separate LED light kits to put this guy together. And I find that very welcoming. The only downside is there's no LED lights for the hazard lights for the very end of the model kit. So you're going to have to do some custom paint job on those areas, you know, like a clear red or a clear green from Tamiya, you know, they make those areas pop out. My biggest concern with this saucer section is the plastic itself is a little too transparent. So it's going to create unusual hot spots when you put custom LED lights or already manufactured LED lights for this model kit. And I think that's going to prove a, a same problem for the top part of the saucer section so i'm going to actually have to apply a flat base on top and bottom to really prevent any kind of light bleeding now when it comes to the clear pieces this is where things get kind of interesting is the shuttle bay piece it's an unusual transparent piece when it should be a solid color i imagine that's there for putting custom led lights to make certain parts pop out but it is a bit distracting for someone that's building it straight out of the box as for the remaining clear pieces it's pretty straightforward and it's not complicated at all i mean it's actually very well designed now the next part of this model kit is the main hull and the warp nacelle now when it comes to the warp nacelles they look relatively nice you know paying homage to the old and definitely representing the new but the plastic quality control is definitely questionable because I noticed there were some areas up where the warp nacelles would be placed. The plastic was either bent or kind of molded in a weird funny way. You know, nothing like some good sandpaper to help resolve that problem, but Polar Lights really needs to get on their quality control in these model kits. As for the main hull, you get a good glimpse of what you can expect for the main deflector disc, followed by the main hull that definitely gives homage to the USS refit while at the same time paying respect to the old constitutional class, and I absolutely love that. And you can definitely see it here from the, um, the pylons themselves, very reminiscent of the original 
Enterprise NCC-1701A. Overall, I like the look and aesthetics of it, but I want to take this model kit to the next level. Is there an affordable LED kit out there? Because I don't want to put LED lights in there, and thus we have the USS Enterprise light kit. Now, this part is a bit questionable because this kit should have came with the model kit. I don't know why. Maybe it has something to do with the current circumstances that we're all in together this year, but it is what it is. And if you want to purchase this LED kit, you can get it from round two. Now, what we can expect inside the box art, right off the bat, it comes with its very own instruction manual on how to install these unique LED lights, which I think it's close to 37 LED lights, if my memory's correctly. But at the same time, this is an excellent introduction for someone to put in their own LED lights into their enterprise that's already thought out. It comes with its own circuit board to where you need to put everything together. It comes with two motors to make the Nassar collectors rotate to look really cool, followed by its own unique system of clear pieces, which you get clear pieces for nacelles, for the warp thrusters and back of the saucer section and at the same time you get a nice aesthetic of clear blues for the warp nacelles now the back part of the engines is a bit questionable because there are their own transparent blue so custom painting is definitely going to be required to make those guys don't look really to stand outish but probably by far the most crowning achievement of this model kit it only requires three AA power batteries to turn this whole kit on and I find that absolutely great the, the, the power supply is a bit bulky so it's going to be kind of difficult to really hide it underneath the action base and as for the remaining wires they are all labeled with their own name and lettering so when you put this guy together you're going to know exactly what wire goes where to turn everything on and how to connect everything all into the circuit board as for the actually Nassau collection no, sorry, Nassau Collector's LED lights. They're not on a rotating light feature like you would see in the TV series. They're actually on a fixed light, but that's when the motor comes into effect to make that effect look really cool. Although you're gonna actually have to carefully paint each um, pylon fan to really pull off that effect. Otherwise, it's just gonna look really funky. And but overall impressions of this model kit, it looks very exciting. This is definitely a great entry level for someone who gets into one of building their very own starship. And it's actually great that they actually include a proper LED kit that isn't ridiculously complicated like how it was back in the 90s. So overall opinions, I'm super excited to jump in and build this model kit. Now, before I get started doing any kind of custom building, I need to evaluate how I'm going to make this effect look really cool. So the LED light kit does come with its very own transparent red pieces, which are great, but I don't like the overall look. I want to really make a look how it's seen on the box art. So I'm going to be rocking out with the clear pieces that came with the kit and give it a nice clear orange. So that way, when I refract a light behind it alongside with the actual rotating blades behind the Nassar collectors, it's gonna make that effect look really cool while at the same time not hiding it or over contrasting it. As for the warp nacelles, I'm gonna actually keep it pretty simple. I'm gonna put custom LED lights in both of the nacelles while at the same time making the registration number pop out alongside of the engine itself. But the back part of the engine's kind of bugging me because once again, it's its own clear piece. It's not something separate. So I'm gonna actually have to mask off this section here, paint it a flat black, and then add some custom flare to it once it's fully set and dry.
literally halfway done constructing the warp nacelle when all of a sudden I noticed that I have a bit of a problem. The LED lights are not on a tread system since I'm using close to like eight on one warp engine over the other. So my biggest challenge is how I'm going to have these guys be in a stationary position. So I had the idea of using one of the clear pieces from the runners and then measure it out correctly to the point where it's just the right length to one end to another and use that as a bridge of some sort. And that way when it's locked into place, I can then glue the LEDs onto that clear piece to create that nice illuminated bar effect instead of just seeing the actual LED light popping through the warp nacelle. I think this effect worked really, really well. And I'm glad I came up with this idea right on the spot. So in this next part, this is going to be extremely difficult because I need to make sure I put in at least two LED lights at the bottom and at the same time three in the back area where the shuttle bay will be. While at the same time, I need to put at least two mega LED lights in the main body and one or two chips towards the next section. The problem is it's going to be a lot of overcrowded and wiring, so there's a high probability that the LED lights might get damaged or might get overcrowding. So what I'm doing here is extremely risky. But for those who don't want to go this route, just stick with the LED light kit that comes with this model kit and you should be good.
So as I mentioned earlier on the video, the challenge for this model kit is making sure Aries pop out. So these little areas underneath the saucer section do have their own clear piece, but the downside these pieces are a little bit on the small side, so they won't create the same effect that I want. That also goes double with these big clear pieces. They're a bit on the on the light side of being a little too transparent. So what I'm gonna need end up doing is actually slightly fogging up those areas with like a Tamiya flat base. Now with the flat base, what it does, it fogs up the plastic to the point where it still looks aesthetically clear clean while at the same time doesn't create like any kind of weird bumps or smudges or smears it just it fogs up the plastic just enough where it looks good so that way when I put an LED light underneath it you're not just looking directly at the LED light once the model kit's done it definitely hides it enough to still um, create that nice cool looking effect so as you can clearly see here putting a direct mega LED light underneath it is a bit too distracting so I want to help reduce that just enough to make the effect look really cool but before I do that I need to apply a flat base underneath the saucer sections so that way there is no light bleeding.
right, my dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this model kit. So before I talk about the goods, I think there's a lot of things that need to be addressed about the bads about this model kit. So first and foremost, quality control for this model kit is pretty darn bad. There were some areas around the main hall, the warp nacelles, and even parts in the saucer section where the plastic wasn't even correctly molded right. And I, I found a way to work around it. I found a way how to fix it. But for someone that's like an average consumer that wants to buy this kit and build it straight up, they're gonna notice those little imperfections and it's gonna make them very pissed off when they actually are done constructing this kit. Another thing that is definitely a big issue is hiking up the price by selling a lot of these components separately. For example, you got the kit, that's like 60 to $70. And you got the LED lighting, that's another um, $50 or maybe $60. And then the water slide decal. So, Overall, you're spending close to $200 for this kit, which me personally, it should have came with everything right off the bat. I'm just telling you right there. Because when I got done building this kit late in July, it was very difficult trying to find the water slide decals. Because there was a handful of YouTubers that already got this kit and the water slide decals in advance, and they were experiencing some indiscrepancies when it came to putting these guys on. Most importantly, the instruction manual is very inconsistent where you need to put the water slide decals. One number does not line up with the other or one piece does not line up with the other. And at the same time, a lot of the water slide decals are kind of eyeballed the way how they put on there. They're not properly measured. And for me personally, I'm a stickler for those kind of details. That really bugs me. Now the quality of the decals are by far not the worst. They actually are really, really good if you apply the right kind of decal sealant and that you still get great results overall. But it would have been nice if round two was a little bit more transparent of the problem instead of hiding it, and they, they really weren't. But overall aesthetics with this kit, I absolutely loved it. I built it in late July, and I was just barely able to finish it towards the end of September. And I'm telling you dudes and dudettes, if you are a big hardcore Star Trek fan, you will not be disappointed with this model kit at all. And like that, my dudes and dudettes, thank you so much for watching this video. A big thank you to the new subscribers and a big thank you to the new Patreons that help make these model kits a reality. And I will see you dudes and dudettes on the next video. Later.